Hi, I'm Jerome and this is my OMG interview. Um, I am from Muruga, that's deep, 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 deep south. And I paint, I've been painting for as long as I can remember, um, well at least doing art for as long as I can remember. I came from a family that that they said that we are good at it. So at some point I started believing them when I was younger and I've been painting ever since. Yeah. All of all of us involved in, in art, um, but not at a professional level per se. You know, like Marvin, I've been drawing and my other brother Joel does like skull, concrete sculptures. Um, so I had to I had to do something as well. <laughs> so I, I paint involved Joel, he does his sculptures and, and tattoos on Marvin. He's catching on again. Yeah. I, I have no idea, you know. You just, you just believe it. You're always hearing that all oh, you're good at it, but <laughs> I don't know where it comes from. Who started saying it first? Or who have been good at it before? Um, you just start believing it at some point and I guess we're gonna continue <laughs> believing it as generations go along. Just keep believing that we good at it. In in art, I guess. Well, you know, you're always drawing and, and but not taking it too seriously. And then you'll be introduced to it in school. So I'm doing art in school, and quite honestly, I was ready to drop art as a subject as soon as possible. <laughs> so in form three, when they had us, they made us choose our subjects. Um, I think I did well enough to get into something else other than that, like food and nutrition, um, TD or one of them. And they decided to put me in art. I, I, wasn't, I, I didn't want to do it at all. I told, I told my mom, well, how am I going to mind my kids when I grow up? <laughs> I choose this as a subject. Um, she said, well, try it. They good at it. They, they made us believe that we had a choice to choose a subject, except me. I had to go into art, so I went to the principal and said, yeah, do it. I uh, stayed with it until Form 5 and she convinced me to do it in Form 6. The only student then to do it in the school at Form 6. Um, and I was accepted into the University of the West Indies to, to, to do it and finish my degree. And still following, following this dream now as at some point it became my dream where it started off as being my mom's dream. But now it's, it's mine because I, I want to do it. I want to keep going all the way with this and see how far this goes. I guess it prepared me to deal with things that I was yet to encounter, you know. Um, it became more of a, more like therapy than it was a hobby. And then it became, and especially when I was doing it as a degree, I did design. So when I finish, if I had a day of class just designing, I'll go home and, and pick up my paintbrush and my paint and just relax with that, you know? A little bit of music and just drawing and painting to end the day. I'm 25 years. Um, at some point, like, I had this image of what an artist looked like. And I thought, like, at this point, I would be that artist and, and be doing all this cool stuff. but. Right now, I just, I just want to exhibit. I just want to put some of my paintings in galleries and, and just stand back and look at them. Or people to see my work, like, that's it. I, as far as the dream is, I just want to exhibit. So, galleries out there. <laughs> I guess the fear of, um, I guess the fear of approaching them and being rejected is, is something I want to deal with first. So, I want to get a body of work, a strong body, and at least a good following of people who, who like it and appreciate my work before I approach them. It'll be a little more difficult for them to say no, I guess. Uh, I guess the first milestone was finishing my degree. Um, the second would be uh, when Al contact me. Al, he tried, he tried this. The space in St. James to showcase young artists. Um, I'll message and I'll say, I like your paintings, I want to put them in my, my space. I'm going to try to sell some pieces. That was, that was a big deal for me. Um, and I think I'll, we got, he was able to sell about three pieces. A few of my favorites were sold right there, so that was a huge deal for me. I'm one of the 
number milestone. So our next one will be entering the exhibit space. And I guess, you see, I, I still have these very, very small dreams, you no know? oh, big dreams. Yes, yes, I want to enjoy the process as I go along. Biggest lesson I learned so far is don't be afraid to make mistakes. Yeah, I, I guess that may have came up from the way I approach art. Like when I'm drawing, it will take forever for me to look at something and try to find that right and correct line to put it, put it down. Um, but whereas you could just approach a paper and put that first line on, down and realize, hmm, that one is wrong. Put down the second one, that one's probably wrong. <laughs> and probably by the 10th line you have there, when you look at it, you're going to see like this. You're going to see which line is the correct line in it. And I guess even with the painting, you're going to have this very, very layered approach because I get it wrong so many times. But when I'm done, I, there's something beautiful there. So I take that lesson and transfer it into life too. When I make a couple of mistakes in drawing, the mistake is there for you to, to look at it and say, yes, I got it wrong 10 times. I got this line wrong. But somewhere between these 10 lines, there's the correct one. And the painting, you're able to just put the writing over it and end up with this very layered and, and beautiful piece. My mom, yeah, um, I guess she, yeah, she inspired me the most. Uh, she passed away, um, but she had this, this ability to, to find a goal and focus on it, you know, um, and regardless of everything else and everything that's happening around you, to be able to, to work on it every single day um, with every fiber of your body. Yeah. She, she inspires me in that aspect, yeah. Um, six years ago, was it? Six years or, or seven years, it's horrible, huh? It's constant. <laughs> no, it's that I'm unable to remember the exact, <laughs> the exact, um, exact time. I guess it's how I dealt with it too by just pretending it didn't happen and and So you were how old when it happened? I was in secondary school. Wow. Yeah. So I, I dealt with it by just pretending it didn't happen. And it's interestingly it especially with doing that, it found a way into bringing itself into what I do. So I keep this inside and when I approach a canvas, like you cannot approach a canvas as a liar. It's going to make sure that you are honest, you know? So with every brush stroke, if you're feeling hurt, if you're feeling painful, and the viewers see it. When people look at it, they say, wow, this is a nice flower, but were you sad when doing it, you know? So that's why the artist has become a therapy for me when it just allows you to express yourself in ways in which even you yourself don't know what you're doing. No, just the exhibit and, and see how, how far. Because at this point, I realize um, there's a bigger plan at play, and I am not aware of what that plan is just yet. Yeah, even from the inception of this, where they said, you're going to do art. I don't want to do art, but I still did it. Uh, so I feel as though there's something in play here, something at play here that probably I might know what it is when I'm there. So just going along and putting my passion at it and see how far it goes. Yes! <laughs> I remember uh, when Al had contacted me with the Wild Other Sisters. I, had, I was working on this painting for about, about a year. About a year, just add a little piece. And every single time I get one of the sisters wrong, it's twins, right? <laughs> And one would always come out a little too different from the other. Um, I finally get it right. It was the night before his before the art fair. And I get it right, put in the background, it looked great. I get my sister to carry it to the frame and shop for she to for, um, for, for them to drop it just in time for the fair. And in I remember when Al contacted me and said, Well, the piece was sold. We had a, a girl that, that bought it and she loved it. I was at how much? I like, whoa. <laughs> uh, that was our empty moment, I remember. Uh, 
calling up my friends and my family. It's like, I just sell a piece. <laughs> People buying it, they actually they like these paintings. <laughs> But that's just the other day. That's about 24 years. Yeah. Thank you for watching my OMG interview. Um, you could find me on Instagram at watson.durham. Like me, follow me. Just, just comment. Just read comments. Um, and bye bye.